First of all, I'm not sure what order you're watching these videos, but this video follows sequentially a video I just did where it was called, I think, Loops. Yeah, the last video was called Orc Shapes 4 Loop 2, where we did two videos on how to do this loop right here. And in this loop, we did XPath so that we could pull out the part number and the quantity. And this video then is kind of taking that to the next step forward, but I'm going to introduce a whole new concept now called direct binding. So the other day we created a sub orchestration that we called using the call orchestration shape. So over here in our project we have two orchestrations, AdPO and OrcPO demo. So the big one is the ORCPO demo. ADPO was just a little tiny dummy orchestration we created. Now we're going to create another little orchestration that's almost a dummy orchestration, but we're going to call it, instead of uh, using the call shape, we're going to call it using direct binding, which is a very highly recommended feature to use. One of the problems with using the call orchestration like this was when we deploy it, you have to be careful to actually start or enable and start the sub orchestration before you start the main orchestration. And also if your orchestrations are in different projects, they also have to be deployed in a very specific order. And that can be kind of a burden. And so when you use direct binding, you're actually kind of doing a concept called loose coupling, where your orchestrations are all kind of the same level. There's none of them is actually considered a sub orchestration. So it's a little more, I think, SOA system oriented architecture oriented so that, so that an orchestration has a purpose and it could be called by anybody and then you can deploy that orchestration in any order and start it in any order without some of the rules that you have to follow when you use the call orchestration shape. So to do this what we're going to do is we're going to have to have a message kind of like a, a request and a response from our new orchestration. So we're going to go do that in our which project again should I do it in? That's always the question. Should I put it in my schema project? Which I guess I will. So we're going to go to the schema project. I'm going to add new item and it's going to be a schema. And I'm going to create two of them. I'm going to create a um, PO inventory request and then I will create a PO inventory response. And I'll do this off the video. So in the request, all I need to do is pass two fields, the part number and the quantity that the customer wants. And then I'm going to get a response back in a separate schema. So now I'm going to go create the second schema called PO Inventory Response. So in my response schema here, I'm going to repeat back the same two fields that got passed to me. You don't have to do that, but I find it makes life a little bit easier. And then I'm going to pass back a simple Boolean variable that says, is in stock, yes or no. And of course, in the real world, this could be a lot more complex than this, but I'm going to try to keep it you know, fairly simple. Okay, so now we've got our schemas, and we need to rebuild the schema project. And then off the video, I'll go remove and re-add the schema project reference from my orchestration. So we're going to add a new orchestration now. Add new item to the project. Click orchestration and then we'll call this orc PO inventory check or validate. I don't know what would be the best name for that. I guess we'll call it inventory check. So this orchestration will begin with the receive and we'll receive the request and it will end with the uh, send which will send back a response. So it's basically a request response type orchestration. And so what we need is two messages over here. The first message is MSG inventory request. And we go to our selected assembly, select from reference assembly. We go to PO schemas and we get inventory request. Then we'll create a new message, message inventory response, and we will grab that the same way. PO schemas response. Okay, so now the first message will be the 
request and the send at the end will be the response. And the send will just label it appropriately. And now we just need some logic in here and again we're going to kind of fake this out. We are we could theoretically access a database or call a C sharp routine or whatever. But uh, let's think about how we can do this. We could basically hard code certain part numbers. And we could say certain part numbers are available and other parts are not. 